turning plastic pollution into a building solution. My name is Nzambi, Nzambi Mate. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya, and we convert plastic waste into building books. I hope I will look back and I will say I, I created a dent in the universe, even if it's just one plastic from the environment. In Kenya, we have plastic waste pollution problem, just like in the rest of the world. Here in Nairobi, we generate about 500 metric tons of plastic waste every single day. And only a fraction of that is recycled. In the same, same breath, we have a deficit of affordable housing units, about 2 million. And this number increases to 200,000 every single year. So, why don't you use this problem of plastic waste pollution and convert it into alternative, affordable building products? and his gender was born. Jenge Makers is an alternative building product uh, manufacturing company and our first product lines are pavers made out of recycled waste plastic. We turn waste into wanted one brick at a time. After you sort the plastic, you take it to the crusher, you crush it into small flakes, you mix it with sand, and then you feed it to an extruder where it uh, mixes the plastic and the sand uh, into oatmeal, like a dough-like dough -like material, and then you take that dough-like material, you feed it in the press, and then in maybe about three minutes, you have your brick. And that's how you make a brick. Uh, building bricks are stronger, cheaper and lighter. So they're stronger because they're made out of plastic and plastic is polymerous in nature, it's like string-like in nature and so when you bind with sand at uh, high temperatures it binds well. Uh, when you process it, it doesn't have a lot of air pockets so it's less brittle, hence stronger. It's lighter, it's almost half the weight compared to the normal concrete and it's cheaper, it's about 25% uh, cheaper than the normal concrete. So yeah, that's our triple threat. So plastic bricks are more environmentally friendly than concrete bricks because of two main reasons. Number one, the sourcing of the materials. Uh, in plastic waste it's more closer compared to um, the cement. And then number two, the CO2 emissions that um, emit due to the process of cement is more than that of plastic processing of the brick. Plastic waste is as a byproduct of refining the crude oil. How do we use that plastic over and over again until we extract its maximum value? At the same time, how do we reduce the CO2 emissions that come due to the construction space? I think it's time we figure out an alternative because um, these resources are not infinite, they are very finite. Once we make these bricks, so we uh, install them either in sidewalks, driveways, households, um, also footpaths. Big thing we're currently working on is building blocks, um, targeting uh, the affordable housing space. We want to make a building. So currently right now we're in the research and development phase, but maybe hopefully in a month or so, sometime next year, inshallah, we'll have the prototype ready. Our goal is to provide a brick that we reduce the material cost by 30%. We reduce the CO2 emissions by about 20% and the, the building time by half. If we get that, I think, inshallah next year, I'll be a happy woman. <laughs> in the building space and in the construction space, we have done the same things over and over again. And my belief is it's time for us to disrupt this space. It's time we rethink. I think for me, pushing the boundaries and, and and moving to the next development and the next solution is just a way of growth, you know? Because if you, if you don't grow, then ideally speaking, that means you're dying. And the future we are going to and the future we are heading to, if we want to be sustainable, then we have to push the boundaries. We, keep, we need to be keeping and pushing those um, innovations out there, testing them. Because you have two options. It either works or it doesn't. Either way, you learn something. I, I, I like saying I started Jijenge, it's like I jumped off a cliff without a parachute. So I was building the plane as I was falling. And um, some of the things worked, some of the things didn't work on the way, but at the end of the day, I got a fulfillment. My hope is 
or rather my aim is where our existence as human beings is not mutually exclusive with sustainability, but rather it's one and the same thing. That is my hope and prayer. Well, up to now we are almost heading to about 100 metric tons of plastic waste by the end of this year. Together with my team, we have been able to create job opportunities for about 113 youths and women here in Kenya. And that I am really proud of and happy. And my hope and prayer is to push to double that or triple that. We need to move and we need to build the future and build it fast. I feel honored and I feel like I'm in the front line of a battlefield. And it's us against uh, sust uh, creating a sustainable earth. And Let's do this. <laughs> For me, the awakening moment was um, in around 2017, I went to coast and I went to the beach and there was so much plastic just coming in and touching the, like the legs. And for me, that was, that was like a eureka moment. I was like, no, enough is enough. Something needs to change. I was tired of plastic everywhere and I was tired of complaining. Until it reached a point, I was like, I need to be that someone. So I was just tired of wait, 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 sitting there in the sad lines, so I took action. That's when I started Jijeng. My purpose is to build a sustainable future and in the context of actually building it literally in the space. Um, my mission is to do that um, every single day and to also do it with style, yeah, to add some source to it because sometimes uh, when you when you're in the sustainability space it, it takes time for you to see the impact and to, for you to see the reaction you need time sometimes years it makes work easy uh, and it makes work a bit fun if you realize what's your purpose it might not come instantaneously but uh, it's a journey it's like uh, unwrapping a, a gift <laughs> The impact I hope to achieve or I would want to achieve is when my time on this earth is done, when I am almost my grandmother's age, I will look back and I will say I, I created a dent in the universe. The impact I did was I was able to extract even if it's just one plastic from the environment and converted it into something amazing, something beautiful, something sustainable. For me that's, that's my motivation, that's my drive. It started with me and my dream uh, in my mom's uh, backyard. And my hope and prayer is someone else will see the same thing and they have a dream, they have a vision, and they want to build it. They will get the courage and the strength to do so.